Hey guys, good afternoon. It's Jaeger262 and welcome back to Armored Warfare. Now, as you can obviously see in front of you, this is just going to be a really quick video. No review, no anything, just in on some news points. Because I don't think I covered anything about the new rotary cannon vehicles. I tried to upload a video about that a couple weeks ago when they released it. We now know the two that will be in the game. Uh, one is going to be the GAU-8 Avenger at Tier 10. It will be a tank destroyer unlocked through the Tier 9 Abrams prototype, which is kind of dumb. And then the other one will be the Vigil Anti at Tier 8. So if I didn't make that video, I'll have to double check, or you probably already know because you haven't seen it. I will try to double back and cover that on its own. But those will be coming in the next Battle Path update, which is what this video is about called the American Dream. It'll be focusing on Area 51. So don't forget that September 20th is coming up and the raid on Area 51 is still a go. Armored Warfare is doing their little part as well. It will introduce all of the new American vehicles. However, there'll only be two new premium vehicles added into the game instead of doing like the other two battle paths, giving you reward vehicles. And that's what I wanted to make this video about. Um, as part of a special, they were doing something, and I was able to... I had gotten the Antos, the BWP-2000, and all the skins in-game. And the last two vehicles were the ones that I was missing, which are, of course, the M95 and the Object 490, which is kind of the crown jewel of this battle path, and that's why it's on the screen right now. I was able to do what I said was impossible, so with 15 days to spare, I guess I was wrong. But here is... The object 490 and all the vehicles that you can get in this battle path except for of course the zuber contract missions and the reason i don't have that one is because i just haven't been grinding contracts a lot and i am a little bit interested in it it is the czech republic tank destroyer but that will also be a feature of the american dream battle path so if you haven't completed this one and you don't have that tier 7 tank destroyer, don't worry, there is another vehicle coming in. It's going to be a tier 8, no, tier 9 premium American tank destroyer. And it's going to kind of be the same exact thing. Uh, heavy on the heavy anti-tank weapons and rockets and some optional choices there. There's a whole article to that vehicle and I also haven't covered it, so I apologize. I've been really slacking on armored warfare news and armored warfare videos in general but as you can see this is why i now have this monster i played a couple of games in it and i will do a full review for anybody who didn't really care to pick one up or hasn't seen one on battle before they're okay it's interesting it's weird it is very as you can imagine clunky to play it takes a long time to get moving but once it does it can go quite fast I got mine up to 70 kilometers an hour a couple of times, so that's different for an MBT. It is very hard to turn, as you can imagine, because uh, of the two tracks. The very cool thing is, is that you can take out, you can get tracked in any one of the tracks. Obviously, you can get tracked by getting hit in the tracks, duh. But as long as the other three are okay, you can still move. Now, there's a massive. It's unlike wheeled vehicles. There's a massive penalty to how you can actually turn, how fast you can reverse. It's a little bit different, but, you know, unique. I wish they would implement that on the Object 279 at Tier 5. That'd be cool. But other than that, its 152mm gun is devastatingly powerful. It's the exact same gun you might recognize it from the T-14 Armada 152. So if you're used to that tank, it'll, it's like that. I think more than anything, it's just a novelty to have. The frontal armor is incredibly thick. It is what everybody says, god tier thick. But in all my games, I've been playing against other tier 10s. And so don't worry. Uh, this lower plate is actually incredibly thin by relative standards. Like, once it's up like this, you can see you can easily penetrate that with most tier 10 main battle tanks. Now, if you're playing at tier 9 or tier 8, obviously you can't. And of course, it has a hydraulic system, so that way the vehicle can drop and angle it like this. So again, no penetration. However, I was able to kill one of these things in my Merkaba Tier 8, and that's simply because as soon as you get it to the side, that's pretty much it. Also, another fun tip for anybody who sees these things on the battlefield, the crew is here. And let me get out of this mode. 
they're literally right here. There's one crew hitbox here and one crew hitbox here behind these two doors. You just saw it's paper thin. So if you can get behind one of these things, they cannot rotate their gun to face behind them. Just fire heat into here and you're gonna kill one if not both of them and of course if the crew is knocked out the vehicle is destroyed so in the hands of the of a good player this thing is completely overpowered and unbeatable but don't worry it's not i've played it you can get taken out i've gotten taken out it's really easy to get flanked in one of these because while it's very fast backwards and forwards i mean it's reverse speed is almost 50 kilometers an hour the penalty to balance that is that its traverse is abysmal it moves very slow very difficult to rotate so keep that in mind if you have one keep that in mind if you're fighting against one it's not the end of the world to see this on the battlefield and last but not least the m95 degman i have not actually played this vehicle yet but something i have not seen any players do or anybody talk about yet is it has a 120 millimeter gun from because if you remember way, way back, I did a story on the development of this vehicle. And Croatia was going between Western and Eastern kind of design schools. And so it both had a 120 millimeter Western gun and they had the 125 millimeter that's kind of like a Soviet import. I forgot that Armored Warfare is going to let you choose between the two. So I have mounted mine with the 120 simply because I think between the two, wrong button. Yeah, between the two, you have a six second reload time here. It's eight for the 125. Aim time is two seconds, where aim time here is 1.6. So it's not exactly that much better. They both get six degrees depression, 13 degrees elevation. This one with its standard rounds has 725 millimeters of penetration, which is just five millimeters better, but it sacrifices the damage. It can only do 570 alpha with standard as you know, the Soviet gun, if you've played any of the tier eight Soviet tanks, can do 727 and usually rolls higher than that. Heat, again, rolls pretty high, only 751 average here, compared to 891, almost 900 with the 125. So just something to keep in mind. I'm just going to use the 120 millimeter because I am, well, I'm not more used to it. I've played both quite a lot, but I just like it more. Uh, and you do get soft kill APS with this. now. This is not actually a reward vehicle. The way to get this, if anybody doesn't know, is you use your battle coins to go to this little section here, and you gotta buy crates and it gives you parts, and then like battle coin boosters and pieces to make more crates. It's kind of ridiculous, but I'm happy to have one. You need a hundred parts to make it. So some crates will drop one, some will drop 10. I obviously got very lucky with my drops because I was able to build it. But all around, I'm going to play this vehicle and see how it is. I've seen them on the battlefield. Hard to take out, in my opinion. Very effective at damaging other vehicles. And so I'm really excited to play this. And then last but not least, at all the vehicles I haven't covered. I've had this for about a week now, two weeks. Um, very fun vehicle. Not as strong as it was on paper. The 60mm cannon is devastating. Obviously it has no armor. And the missiles, while they hit hard have almost no no guidance they are very hard to control so keep that in mind they basically just shoot straight out just like the warrior milan if you're used to using that vehicle at tier seven it's it's a which it's right here yeah so if you're used to playing this vehicle and firing from this like fixed thing where it shoots out and you have to wait like one or two seconds before you actually gain control of the missile same idea here uh not too much to say about this one it's pretty cool so if you don't get any vehicles out of this or if you're trying to decide and you don't have a lot of coins i would suggest going for this one because just like my review on the Antos, i think while it is a novel vehicle that's only good in certain situations uh it's good to note that it's aps gets 180 to 221 damage and that's for 320 millimeters of pet well that doesn't seem like a lot you have to remember that at tier seven that's going to be penetrating the frontal arm of some tanks like i was able to kill a t-80u frontally with this vehicle now that's very rare but it can do it so keep that in mind if you're thinking about maybe you don't want to invest in the battle path or not there's nothing here that's so crazy insane that if you see it on a battlefield you can't take it out or it's going to make other players who did invest in the battle path 
way better in you know player versus player modes. So don't worry about that. But if you are interested, you are invested, the BWP is pretty fun. The Antos is of course fun. And if you want to go all the way, or you're already almost there, the Object 490 is pretty cool too. So that's about it. Just a quick video to show you the Age of Rage kind of reward vehicles now that I have all of them. Even though the three here are just the skins, they're not actually reward vehicles. You have to buy them in the game and then you just get a skin for them. But either way, thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, please throw it a thumbs up. If I actually go back and find out that I didn't do those other news videos, I'm going to post them later today. So please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get notified of when those will go up. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.